Hunter bows are some of the most useful and popular weapons in Horizon Forbidden West, and for good reason. But they're also the most abundant weapon type in the game. I mean, there are a lot of these to choose from, 21 in total. And certainly not all of them are worth the time and resources it takes to upgrade them to their max level. So how do you know if you have a good one or one that's best left in your stash? We're gonna break it all down. Hey everyone, I'm Chaz, and today we are gonna be talking all about Hunter bows. In particular, the best Hunter bows in the game. And I'll be giving you a couple of different examples from each of the different rarity types, because who doesn't love choices? But to start, let's talk about what makes the Hunter bow just such a versatile option to begin with. See, a good Hunter bow can excel in what I call the three pillars of weapon combat in the Forbidden West, or the TPOW, CIT, FW for short, which are damage, tear, and elemental buildup. Now, most weapons in the game will specialize in one or maybe two of these things, but a good Hunter bow can excel in all three. But for the sake of this video, I'm only going to focus on the impact damage and the tear aspects of the Hunter bow and not the elemental buildup. Now, mainly, that's just to keep the video simple and give it a little bit of focus, but also because some of the elements in the Forbidden West are largely subjective. And if you've got a Hunter bow that's really good at dealing fire damage, but fire itself is mostly a useless element, is that still a good Hunter bow? I don't know, you tell me what you think, and let me know in the comments if you want me to do another video where I break down the best elemental hunter bows in the game, because there is certainly a lot to talk about there. But when it comes to judging the best hunter bows in the game, we're primarily gonna be looking at three things, the impact damage, the ability for tear, and the weapon perks. But let's kick it off talking about some of the best uncommon green hunter bows, starting with the whisper hunter bow. The Whisper Hunter Bow, appropriately named because it comes with plus 65% stealth damage. Now, stealth is an incredibly important aspect to the game, especially early on when you don't yet have weapons and armors strong enough where you can just go running into enemy territory guns ablazing. So the 65% damage buff for stealth is a really nice touch. But there's also a big trade-off because you can typically only get one or two shots off while in stealth before the enemies are alerted that you're there and you lose the stealth buff. So you have to pick your shots and your targets carefully. This bow is probably best used early on if you're looking to tear off specific machine parts, especially considering this bow has the highest tear of any of the other green hunter bows. This bow makes it really easy to get in, get the part you need, and get out. Now for coils, as a general rule of thumb, you typically wanna use coils that are gonna either increase or augment some of the weapon's perks or negate some of the negatives for that weapon type. But for green weapons and this early in the game, this isn't always possible. So I typically just use the best coils that I have available at the time. The next green bow worth looking at is the strong arm hunter bow. This is the strongest green hunter bow in the game in terms of impact damage. But the main reason why I love this bow is because of the perks that it comes with. The strong arm bow comes with plus 30% overdraw damage and plus 5% critical hit chance. Overdraw is the damage buff you get by fully drawing your weapon before you shoot. You'll know that you've overdrawn your weapon because your crosshairs will change and the arrow will start to glow. And the 30% damage increase when fully drawing your weapon is a pretty decent damage buff this early on. And a weapon perk that increases critical hit chance is always going to be a good option if you're looking to maximize damage. Critical hits for hunter bows deal 1.5x damage, but only occur naturally 10% of the time. So anytime we can increase either our critical hit chance or our critical hit damage, we're going to want to take advantage of that. Now, once we get into the blue rare hunter bows, we gain access to advanced hunter arrows, which is going to increase our tear and increase our impact damage. But there is a little bit of a trade-off here because they're a little bit more resource heavy to craft. They're going to cost five ridgewood and 10 shards to craft as opposed to one shard and two ridgewood to craft. But the blue bow that I really like is the sun-touched hunter bow. This bow has both the highest impact damage and the highest tear of any of the blue hunter bows. It's also really easy to get since you can just buy it from merchants at either Plainsong Hunting Grounds, Scalding Spear, or in Thorn Marsh. The real reason why I like this bow is because of the weapon perks. This bow goes all in on critical hits. You get 15% critical hit chance, plus 25% critical hit damage, and plus 15% overdraw damage. So not only are we increasing the likelihood of getting a critical hit, but anytime we get the critical hit, it'll deal plus 25% greater damage. This makes it a really powerful option, and it's a good bow to carry you up to the mid game. And for coils, I'd double down on all things critical hits. I'd go with two 10% critical hit chance coils, which is gonna bring our total percent chance of getting a critical hit up to 45%. But moving on, another blue bow that I really like is the Berserker Hunter bow. Now this bow doesn't quite have the same amount of firepower that the Sun-Touched Hunter bow does, 
but it does have plus 15% overdraw damage and plus 25% knockdown power. Knockdowns are another really powerful combat element in the game, but are really seldomly used. If you're fighting a group of machines and need to thin out the crowd, or just need to give yourself a bit of space, knockdowns are a great way to do it. And hunter bows also come with the knockdown shot weapon technique, which makes it easier to trigger a knockdown. Now, I'll be honest, I don't use this weapon technique very much at all, but when I do, a really fun combination to pair it with is with two 15% knockdown damage coils. This makes it really easy to trigger the knockdown with the weapon technique, and then you can take advantage of the additional damage buff when the machines are knocked down. So now, moving on to the purple, very rare hunter bows. And at the top of my list is the martial hunter bow, which you can pick up from Duka in the arena for 84 hunting ground medals. The Martial Hunter Bow has the highest impact and highest tear damage of any of the other very rare purple bows, which makes it an obvious choice. This bow is easily one that can carry you right up through the end game. But with the weapon perks, it also comes with plus 25% concentration damage and 15% overdraw damage. These are both pretty solid weapons perks to help amplify overall damage. Nothing really stands out here as far as being too unique, but you can make this bow even stronger with the additional concentration damage or overdraw damage coils or maybe even swapping in a draw speed coil to help get to that overdraw state more quickly. As far as the second best purple hunter bow, I would say this is really where things start to get up for debate. And this one really more than anything comes down to your personal preference and play style, or your PMP as I like to call it. The Vanguard hunter bow has the second highest impact damage and tear, but only two weapon perks. And one of them is plus 40% knockdown damage. So it's really only useful if you're using knockdowns on a regular basis, which isn't most players. And the Sunshot Hunter Bow has four weapon perks, more than any of the other very rare bows, but two of them, plus 25% corroding enemy damage and plus 25% aerial damage, are way too specific to be all that useful outside of very certain situations. So then you're left with plus 40% draw speed and plus 15% overdraw damage. And then there's the Seeker Hunter Bow, which doesn't deal quite as much impact damage or tear, but it does have plus 40% close range damage, which is a 40% damage increase when hitting targets within 10 meters. Honestly, I don't know which one of these I think is better. I think my preference is probably the Sunshot Hunter Bow, and I would augment that with an additional 25% draw speed coil and two 15% overdraw damage coils. But what's your favorite purple hunter bow? I'm curious about your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, now on to the main event, the best legendary hunter bows in the game. Honestly, once you get to this point in the game and you're choosing between legendary hunter bows, you can't go wrong no matter which one you pick. There are four legendary bows total, and each of them are great in their own way. The difficult part with these legendary hunter bows is just getting access to them in the first place. Some of them you can only get in the Burning Shores DLC, others you have to win in the arena, and some you can't even get at all until you're in New Game Plus. But these are definitely worth getting if you're gonna be heading into New Game Plus. So what are some of the best orange legendary hunter bows? Let's start by talking about the Emperor's Rain hunter bow that you can buy from the merchant in the Burning Shores. If you have the DLC for PS5, or you've got the Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition on PC and have access to the Burning Shores, this Hunter Bow is well worth picking up and well worth the time it takes to upgrade it to its max level. The Emperor's Reign has the highest impact and highest tear damage of any of the other bows. And as a legendary bow, it gives you access to five different weapons perks and five different coil slots which gives you a ton of flexibility for how you can use it. Now I would say, if there is a downside to this bow, it is those weapon perks. Plus 25% stealth damage is good, but again, we can really only use that effectively once or twice before machines know we're there and we lose that damage buff. And plus 25% close range damage is good, but in order to use it, we have to be pretty up close and personal with our enemy within 10 meters. So as far as weapon perks go, I would say there's nothing in here that really stands out to me as being all that exciting and useful. But despite that, this is still a great hunter boat that can easily carry you through the entire game. And last, but certainly not least, is the Tears of the Land God hunter boat that you can get for Champions tokens exclusively in New Game Plus. This is, in my opinion, the absolute best hunter boat in the entire game. It doesn't necessarily deal as much damage as the Emperor's Reign, but what it lacks in damage, it more than makes up for in terms of weapon perks. In particular, I really like the plus 20% concentration damage and the 15% overdraw damage to increase the overall damage output. And the 65% draw speed is also significant because it helps you get to that overdraw state faster so you can take advantage of that damage buff. And the plus 25% component tear is completely unique to the TLG, 
We don't see this on any of the other hunter bows. Now, what I really like about this perk is that when you get to a certain point of the game, you have to farm machine parts a little bit in order to upgrade those legendary weapons and gear. So this bow is gonna make it even easier to farm those machine parts you need so you can upgrade all your gear to the max level. So that coupled with the other weapons perks, coupled with the tear damage and the impact damage is why I think the TLG is the best hunter bow in the entire game. But which hunter bow do you think is the best in the game? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And be sure to like this video and subscribe for even more Horizon Forbidden West content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.